Hey everybody, it's Beth. Welcome to Infinite Garden. If you're new here, welcome. This is largely a beauty channel, but we celebrate self-acceptance, authentic personal style, and sometimes the expansion of consciousness. When I heard that Glossier was coming to Sephora, I was kind of excited and kind of surprised, and I wanted to talk about it. Glossier is a brand I've been using for years. The founder of the brand, Emily Weiss, had a blog back in the day when I used to read a lot of blogs called Into the Gloss. I read Into the Gloss for years before she launched Glossier in October 2014, so I can count myself as one of her earliest customers. I was curious from the beginning, and I was happy with the products that she came out with first. Since then, I've followed almost every launch throughout the years. I have the majority of the products. I grouped everything I had into one shot, minus Halo Scope. I forgot to add the Halo Scope into this mix. This is everything I have currently in my inventory. So I've been using Glossier products for eight years. A lot of these products I've purchased and repurchased and they've become favorites of mine. I have a lot to share. I'm going to include timestamps below for every single one of the products and I'm going to try to group the different products by category type in case you're interested. I also shot some B-roll footage beforehand. I did put together a look using mostly Glossier products that you can see here. Basically, this video will be me sharing my complete thoughts on the Glossier lineup. If that sounds good to you, I hope you stay and subscribe. Because this brand's tagline has been skincare first, makeup second, we will start with skincare. So the first thing is Balm.com. This is a petroleum-based balm product that is sold in a variety of shades and flavors. I think I've bought almost all of them. It's a really good product. They offer it sometimes in sets of three for a discount, and so that's probably why I have so many. I've tried them all. I tend to prefer, personally, the ones that are not tinted, but have some kind of flavor, or if they're very lightly tinted. My favorite ones have been mint and mango. I also really like the cookie butter one. I do think Balm.com is a good product. I enjoy having this in my bag. I find it very useful. I live in a cold climate in the winters, and I do find that petrolatum layer on my lips to be very protective, and I do enjoy the scents. I think this is slightly overpriced. It's probably something that you can skip if you have a lip balm you like, but if you're interested in it, if you think it's cute, I think that it's a good product. Okay, they offer a product called After Balm, which is a product that you put over your skincare before you go to bed to kind of seal it in. I'm willing to try this at some point. I haven't tried this one yet. This is one of the newer releases that I haven't gotten to. Okay, Future Dew is meant to be a last step that you apply over your skincare and sunscreen before you begin applying makeup. So in a lot of ways, it's like an oil-based primer. I've almost used up an entire bottle of Future Dew, and I do have one in the hopper to open up again. This is a nice product if your skin is prone to dryness, especially if you live in a harsh climate. I like this better in the winter than I do in the summertime. It does have rosemary extract in it, I believe, so it could be irritating if that's a, an ingredient that you don't like. But this is a product that can go over your sunscreen and provide a bit of a sheen, kind of a finished effect. If you're someone who doesn't use foundation at all, which can be very common with people who are 40 plus, your skin might be very even in tone now and you don't wish to use foundation. This is a nice product to apply over your sunscreen as a last step. It does give you a bit of luminosity. I think it's nice. I like Future Dew. Okay, priming moisturizer. There are three products that fall in the priming moisturizer category. There is the original priming moisturizer, which I have purchased untold quantities of. This is my go-to daytime moisturizer. It's not my evening moisturizer. It's the one I use during the day. I, I do a lot to moisturize my skin before bed, and so I usually wake up with hydrated skin, but I still need a little more moisturizer, but I don't want anything with actives in it or anything that's going to basically compete with my makeup or cause it to pill. For the priming moisturizer is a super simple, uncomplicated, fast absorbing moisturizer that I really like to use. It's my current tube of it and you can see I've almost worked my way through this. I don't have one in the hopper so I will be repurchasing. There's also a priming moisturizer in a richer formula that's sold in a tub. This one is pretty good. I have only ever purchased one of these and I haven't finished it and I don't plan to repurchase it. Although I do think it's a pretty good product. I've heard that like some people like to use this for shaving. Like if you have a beard, you might like to use this as your shaving cream. I can totally see that. For me, I think it's just slightly too rich and it's not really my favorite of the three products, of the three priming moisturizer products, but I did give it a shot. They also offered one that's called 
priming moisturizer balance that has some niacinamide in it and it controls your oils. I love this product. I use this in my T-zone only. I don't really like niacinamide on my cheeks because I find that it might exacerbate some latent eczema that I have, but I do love this, especially on my forehead. I have very oily T-zone and I get shiny fast. I find that this particular moisturizer helps to control the oil production in my T-zone without drying out my skin. So while I can say that the priming moisturizer balance doesn't dry out my skin, I also can't use it every single day because I am so sensitive to niacinamide, but I love this product. I definitely plan to repurchase. The Universal Pro Retinol, I don't know what I can say about it. I have it. It's a 0.5, what is it, a 0.5%? Is that crazy? Is that, am I saying something crazy right now? It's a 0.5% retinol. I wanted to try this product on the areas where I have not been using retinol. I have used it, but I haven't been consistent with it. I don't think I'm in a place to really provide a good review of this product, although I've been using it. I can say it has not irritated my skin. I've been using this product on my neck and my decollete, which are very sensitive areas, and I haven't had any problems with like the burns that you can get from retinol sometimes. So, so far I like it, but in all fairness, I haven't really been using it enough. Okay, the Milky Jelly Cleanser. I've had this in the past and I haven't repurchased. I have other cleansers that I like. This one's pretty good. I think some people like it. It didn't wow me and it's a little pricey, so I have not chosen to repurchase this one. The Solution. This is an acne solution product. This is a product that has AHAs, BHAs, and PHAs. And what I use this product for, I rarely will use this product on my face. I think I've purchased this one half a dozen times and gone through this. So this is a product that I do like and I usually always have in my stock. I can tend to break out on my shoulders, especially in the summertime, especially if I'm working out more and I've got like a sports bra rubbing up against my shoulders. I have been using this product for years to keep my body areas where I break out, to keep them free from breakouts. I will sometimes resort to using this on my face, but it'll be like once. I tend to break out in this area. I may you know, put some of this solution either on a cotton ball or right into my hand. I'll pump it just loose into my hand and lightly pat it into my skin, maybe one time during the breakout, and I find that it usually clears it up. I do find it's too harsh for my skin to use on a daily basis, but it's always in my arsenal. The Cleanser Concentrate is a new product I haven't tried yet, can't speak to it. The Moisturizing Moon Mask is a wonderful moisturizing hyaluronic mask. I have gone through at least a half a dozen of these. The product that I have is nearly empty and I'll have to reorder pretty soon. This is one that I like to use when I'm soaking in the tub. When I have my hair masks in, I'll put this on just to keep my skin nice and moisturized. I think it's really great. Their other mask is Mega Greens Galaxy Pack. This is a clay mask meant to draw impurities out of the pores. This is one I use less frequently. In terms of the rate of use, I use the Moon Mask a lot more than I use this Mega Greens Galaxy Pack, but I do like this. It's my favorite clay mask and really the only one that I use on my face. It's really good and when I find myself, especially in the summertime, more than the winter time, when I'm experiencing congestion, this is a really great go-to product that doesn't irritate my skin and gently removes impurities. I like this one a lot too. They offer three serums that they call Super Something. So there's Super Bounce, which is hyaluronic acid. They have Super Glow, which is vitamin C. And then they have Super Pure, which is niacinamide. I've tried all of these. I've purchased and repurchased these. I'm sort of like lukewarm on them over time. The hyaluronic acid is a very good product and it works well. I find that I need something more and I've moved on to a more like heavy duty hyaluronic acid, but it is good. I think these are really designed for maybe younger skin that doesn't need as much. The vitamin C I don't really think is a good buy. I think that this product isn't necessarily going to deliver the results that you're looking for and I think your vitamin C dollars might be better off elsewhere. I don't see how this one doesn't get oxygenated almost immediately just by opening it and putting the dropper in. It doesn't seem like the most stable way to store a vitamin C product, so I would probably skip that one. The uh, Super Pure Niacinamide, I have found that niacinamide isn't necessarily my best friend. I can find that it dries my skin out, but I do like having the Super Pure in my arsenal for when I do have breakouts. Sometimes I'll just do a couple of drops and put it on. If I ever do happen to run through this product, which I can't say for sure I will, I don't think I will repurchase. Okay, the Milky Oil Waterproof Makeup Remover. 
This is actually a good product and I like it. This one I specifically like for removing lipstick. Sometimes I will use a lip paint if I'm going out for a long time and I want to have my lipstick last and I'm using some kind of lip stain or lip paint that dries to like a painted finish. I find that this Milky Oil makeup remover is one of the most effective at removing gently. I generally will put this product onto a cotton ball and soak it and like drench the lipstick with this remover so it just dissolves and I can very gently remove it without tugging on my skin. I think it's a nice gentle product and it works really well for those purposes. Okay, the Invisible Shield Sunscreen. This is a good product if you can handle a chemical sunscreen. I like this product so much, I actually put it in people's Christmas stockings in my family if I think they're not using sunscreen enough. I have a lot of fair-skinned people in my family who I think could always use a little more sunscreen in their medicine cabinets. I think that this product is great. It is. It goes on clear, it leaves no cast. It is a chemical sunscreen and some people find that irritating. I myself can wear it. So what I tend to do with this product is use it on my neck and chest and sometimes on my hands. I think it's great. I purchase it and repurchase it and give it as a gift. I like this product. The Soothing Face Mist is kind of a whatever, although I purchase it and use it. I like that the mister is very fine and I like that it has a beautiful rose scent. I find it calming and soothing. I don't know if this is a need to have, but it's a nice to have, and I have purchased and repurchased this product. The Zit Stick is a favorite product of mine from Glossier. It's a little bit of benzoyl peroxide that comes in a wand that you click up and apply directly to a zit. This is another stocking stuffer item for me. I find for me when I break out, which I do, that this particular product combats the zit reliably without burning a hole through my skin. Other topical zit treatments that I've used in the past have been too irritating for me. For whatever reason, this one is both effective and gentle, and I like to have it. I usually buy them two at a time and put one in my husband's kit and one in my kit. I think these are great. Okay, makeup is second. I wanted to first override the website here and talk about the Perfecting Skin Tint. This is an extremely sheer, like extra light foundation formula. That is such a useful formula for me personally. I don't really need full coverage all the time. Most days I'm going into the office or doing whatever and I just need like maybe a little bit of skin perfecting and that's, that's what it's called so maybe I need to come up with a different word but just like a little bit of blurring whatever it is evening out and I love this formula so much. I'm gonna say something pretty serious here but if going forward I could only pick a single foundation to wear for the rest of my life, I would without hesitation choose Glossier's Perfecting Skin Tint. I have it in three colors because the shade range isn't perfect and the best color for me is G8, which is a medium neutral. I would love a light medium neutral and I'm hoping that their presence at Sephora will push them into expanding their shade range. I think they can do that and I hope they do do that. So the Perfecting Skin Tint is one of my all-time favorite Glossier products. They also make my favorite concealer. The Stretch Concealer really does provide the concealing that you need if you are using this extra, extra light foundation. I find this to be one of my favorite concealers to use under my eyes. I am 40 plus. My under eyes are dry and there are fine lines and I find the emollient, movable, forgiving nature of this particular concealer to be excellent and one of the only ones that I can count on not breaking up and looking terrible in a short period of time. I absolutely love it, and I'm excited to see if they expand the ranges on the concealers as well. I do think Glossier's complexion products are outstanding, and I do plan to continue to buy these as long as they're available. Another standout product from Glossier are their cloud paints. These are super high pigmented gel-based cheek tints. They come in a variety of colors. They have Oh, are there colors I haven't tried? <gasps> I only have six. Oh my gosh, how many are there? There are eight shades. I have only tried six. What is going, oh my goodness. I need to figure out which ones I haven't tried. Oh, that's beautiful. Focus. These are excellent products. They are highly pigmented, so a tube of this cheek tint will last forever. Honestly, will last for years and years and years. I use these all the time and they seem to go and go. My particular favorites with my skin tone, I like Dusk, which is a tan nude color. I like a dramatic eye most of the time and I find it doesn't compete with the dramatic eye. 
I also really like the peachy color beam because peach is a good color for me and I like the rosy mauve storm. It's a deeper tone and a little tiny dab will do you if you have skin my shade. They offer incredible pigmentation. The other genius part about these is that they mix together beautifully. If you wanted to combine a couple to make a custom color for you, these are great. It works beautifully in the perfecting skin tint. I find that the perfecting skin tint doesn't set to the point where if you then waited a little bit and came back and used the cloud paint, I don't feel like it would disrupt the finish of the perfecting skin tint. They married together beautifully and I don't feel like it disappears by the end of the day either necessarily it's just so pretty and simple and sort of unnoticeable I am a huge fan of this I do expect that when I run out of the brownish nude one that I will repurchase okay boy brow boy brow is pretty good I've had boy brow in tinted shades and I've had it in the clear shade I used up the clear one during my no buy and so I haven't repurchased. I'm trying to use up all of my brow products, but after using up my boy brow in clear and then going to a gel that had a firmer set, I found that I missed the boy brow. It's a pomade that fluffs up your natural brows. I think Glossier was a little early to the party too with having like fluffy natural brows and making them look as like healthy and bushy as possible. I have sparse brows, so I can't use boy brow alone, but I do like it and I think I might actually repurchase when I'm through with my super strong Anastasia Beverly Hills gel stiff hold, which is kind of driving me nuts right now. Pro tip is their eyeliner pen that gives you a wing. Glossier for a long time didn't really offer much in the way of eye makeup except for just the wing that was sort of their look for a long time. I don't like this kind of pen no matter who makes it. I've tried Yves Saint Laurent's, I've tried Fenty's, I've tried Glossier's. I don't like this delivery method personally. So this is a perfectly fine type of eyeliner if you like this delivery method. I don't, I won't repurchase. Lash Lick is a tubing mascara that I love. When I used up my tube during my no buy, I was sad about it and kind of can't wait to repurchase this product. I still have a couple of unopened tubes of mascara that I'm going to get through before I buy any new mascara. But when the time comes, it's very likely I will be purchasing Lash Lick. I find that it gives a very natural effect. It doesn't widen or clumpen your lashes, it elongates. It actually adds filaments to the end of your lash hairs. So it makes them very long and kind of a little erratic, which I like. I have pretty, you know, present lashes. My lashes are pretty thick and pretty long. And so I find that this particular formula flatters them in a way that I like. And I found it to be very good for like office wear if I'm not trying to do an overly glamorous look. It's a good product. Solar Paint is their cream bronzer. It's pretty good. They only have four shades. I imagine when they get to Sephora, they'll be expanding their range. The one that I'm using is Flare. It's their lightest shade and it's pretty neutral, which is good. Some cream bronzers that I've tried in the past wind up looking orange on me and this one doesn't, so I like that. I do find it blends in beautifully like the cloud paint into the perfecting skin tint. It's a good product if you can find a color you like and if you like a cream bronzer. I don't mind the doe foot applicator. I feel like it helps give a precise placement, so that's good. Halo Scope is their highlighter. It's useful. I think it provides a pretty highlight effect. The issue is that it remains somewhat tacky on the face because it has basically like a balm on the inside. So it's almost like if you put chapstick on your face. It's pretty, but I don't love the formula. I don't know if I'll use this whole tube. In fact, I ended up not even putting it on my like family photo of my Glossier products because I have it in this quarantine box I've set aside for products I don't really use that much to see if I miss them and I almost forgot that I had it so I think I might not be the biggest fan of Halo Scope. Okay, Brow Flick. Brow Flick is a pen that you use to draw in individual hairs. There must be something about the way I put on my skincare or whatever. I can get a nice line on the back of my hand from Brow Flick, but when I try to use it on my actual brows, I find that it doesn't appear, and it might be because I'm using too many emollient products, but I ended up finding Brow Flick unusable and I reverted back to a like wax-based pencil. Okay, they offer two eyeshadows that are cream. They offer Lid Star, which is shimmery, and they offer Sky Wash, which is matte. I don't like liquid eyeshadow, so I haven't tried Sky Wash, although I did try Lid Star. I had it in two shades, and I really hated it and ended up throwing them away, so that wasn't for me. I do like the Monochrome's eyeshadows. I have them in three shades now. I reviewed these when these came out a year ago. I'll put a card up now. 
These are a very subtle eyeshadow. If you're not trying to get a completely crafted eyeshadow look and you really just want a wash of color and a little bit of shimmer without drawing a lot of attention to your eyeshadows, I think this is actually a pretty nice formula and it comes in a variety of interesting shades. So I wasn't so sure about it when I first tried these out, but over time I'm actually finding that I use these on a day-to-day -day basis pretty regularly. I also like to take these with me when I'm traveling if I want a super low-key eyeshadow look. So these have actually turned out to be a win for me. I just saw this little hair in the monitor. Is this driving you guys crazy? <laughs> I'll just slide this back here and hope for the best. Sorry, guys. Okay, Glossy offers three lip products, really. I don't know why I'm like this, but I honestly have bought almost all of these. <sighs> Generation G is okay. It's a product I don't actually reach for that often, but every time I do try it again, I'm reminded why I like it. Having a sheer matte lip is a really interesting formula and their colors are good. I really like the Coco Brown Leo shade. I think that looks fantastic in a matte formula. I also like, what is this one, Cake. Cake is like a peachy kind of neutral color. Those are pretty good. I find that they don't go on with like that super satisfying smooth glide that I like from a lipstick. It's a little tuggier, but whatever. They're pretty good. I do, however, like the Ultra Lip very much. The Ultra Lip is a little more emollient. It's something that wears off more readily. So if you put it on, I would expect to have to put it on again and again, maybe keep it with you. If you want to have it during the day, you might need to reapply. I think their colors are beautiful. Again, if you want to see the shades on me, check out those shorts. They also offer their lip gloss in four shades. I've had three. I've had the clear, the red, and the sparkly. The clear and the red are my favorite. I think they're both good products. They make a good, juicy, classic lip gloss. I think it's good to have a clear lip gloss in your arsenal, and I think Glossier's clear lip gloss is definitely worth trying. I do see on their website that they're offering a variety of brushes. I haven't tried them. They have like a double-ended eyeshadow brush, which is okay. I keep my eye brushes in like a cup, and so I don't always love the double-ended ones because that means one of my ends is always at the bottom of the cup, and I don't really love that. So I don't think I would purchase the double-ended brush. And they have one that comes with the water. Oh, I forgot to talk about the water. They offer a powder as well. So the powder is a finishing powder. If you want the perfecting skin tint not to be quite so dewy and glossy, you can powder down with the water. I think it's a nice product. I have it in light medium. It does offer a tint that is not a translucent powder. It does offer a slight tint and a little bit of coverage. It's not necessarily my favorite powder formula. I think I do prefer a translucent powder, but I do think this powder is extremely fine milled and it works beautifully with their other complexion products. So I'm into it. I'm currently using it now in my effort to use up products I've had for a long time. Basically a use it or lose it situation. So I am using Wowder again these days and I'm finding that it is lovely. I don't think that it's cakey. It doesn't seem to irritate my skin or clog my pores. So I can't really say anything shady about Wowder. I think it's a pretty nice product. They did come out with a Wowder brush, which I don't have because I have a nice powder brush that I use otherwise, so I didn't need it. But overall, Glossier's makeup has been a winner for me, specifically the complexion products. I really love Cloud Paint. I have found that the eyeshadow is something I'm reaching for, so I wanted to report back on that. Okay, Glossier has a few body products as well. Let's see, they've got four or five. They've got five on their website, and I have tried all five of these. Okay, starting with the ones I don't recommend. I don't recommend the Dry Touch Oil Mist. It comes in a glass bottle and has a fine mist. So what I found often is that when I was misting it onto myself, it would get everywhere on my tile floor and it would sometimes imperil my life because of that. So I prefer my oil to be in a pump format. It does come in a glass bottle, which is great. It's eco-friendly, but I was also nervous a lot of times like I was going to break it. So it smells beautiful and it is a lovely product. I don't love the packaging. And I don't recommend the Body Hero Daily Perfecting Cream. This is a moisturizer, a body lotion. And I found that it really sat on top of my skin, almost like it had some kind of like 
silicone or wax in it that just prevented it from absorbing into my skin, which is not ideal. I do like their Body Hero Daily Oil Wash. I like that for when my skin is feeling a little dry, especially in the winter, and I need to you know, wash myself in the shower, but I don't want anything stripping. I think this is lovely. It has like a neroli orange blossom scent, which is really, really lovely. What I also like to do is pump a couple of squirts of this into my bath water under the running water just to get a little bit of foam but to add to my bath. I love that. I think I've had like four or five bottles of this and I can tell it's maybe like there's like a quarter of it left here currently so I do use this one. I don't use this product every single day but I do like to have an oil wash in my arsenal and I do think this one's lovely. Okay the Body Hero Exfoliating Bar. I have used up an entire bottle of this exfoliating bar. It lasts a long time. I had moments where I wondered if it wasn't causing some kind of irritation for me. So I wanted to go for a while without using it and then see if I reintroduced it, if it caused it again, if that was the problem. But what this is, is a solid format scrub. I love the packaging in the sense that it is a bar product that just dissolves over time and comes in a paper box. There's no plastic at all associated with this particular product. I absolutely love that. If I find this product doesn't cause irritation, I'll probably make this my go-to body scrub product versus buying plastic tubs of something. But I need to figure that out before I, I conclude. I'll let you know. The oil mist, the body wash, and the cream and the bar all have the same scent. They have this like orange blossom scent. But the hand cream smells like Glossier U, which is like a musky violet scent. It's very nice. The hand cream packaging is a little awkward, but also nice for the handbag. I've had a few packages of this. I'm not totally sold on the packaging. I wish you could refill it because it's so plasticky, but I do think as far as hand creams go, that it's a lovely, fast absorbing, very moisturizing hand cream. Glossier U is a violet scented fragrance. It's $64 for 50 ml, which puts it in range of any kind of like higher end designer fragrance. I do think it's lovely. I'm wearing it right now. It has a kind of personal, warm, musky scent. I think this is a lovely fragrance. It's meant to merge with your own body chemistry and present an inoffensive kind of personalized scent. I don't know how much it does that, but I do know this is a very lovely, low-key, cozy, high-end smelling fragrance. It comes both in a spray format, which I have, and the solid format, which they had, and they pulled, and then they re-offered. I'm super curious about the solid. I haven't had a chance to try it. I have a desire to buy it at some point, but I won't let myself do that until I finished up the spray bottle. I also see on their site that they're offering a uh, candle in the scent, which is out of stock. It must have sold out like crazy. You can buy the bottle of perfume and a candle, and for $78 in a set, I see why that sold out. If I were in the market to purchase Glossier U again, I would have definitely gone for this set with a candle. I think that would be a lovely room scent as well. You guys, we made it through the entire website. Are you still here? Thank you so much for still being here. Those are my thoughts on this kind of iconic millennial direct-to-consumer brand that is now going to be more available to consumers through its presence at Sephora. Let me know what you think about this. If you want me to talk about any more of these products in depth, please let me know. I'm excited for Glossier to be at Sephora. I'm excited for Sephora to have Glossier. I hope their partnership is mutually beneficial. I'm curious to see what new products Glossier introduces as a result of this partnership. I'm curious to see if they improve their body moisturizer. I'm interested to see if they get into hair care. That could be very interesting as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts. Are there products that you're excited about, that you've tried, that you love, that you hate? I want to hear from you. I hope all of you are doing well out there, and I hope you have a great week ahead. Thank you so much for watching. Talk soon.